Chapter 8 Risk and Rates of Fee Turn In this video we are going to solve problem 1 in this chapter about expected return. Problem 8.1 A stock's returns are the following distribution. The demand for the company's products we are analyzing is given under different scenarios. Weak, below average, average, above average, and a strong scenario. The probability of each scenario is given as well. For example, the probability of uh, having a weak demand for the company's product is 0.1, which is equivalent to 10%. The probability of having below average demand for the company's product is 0.2, and so on. The summation of all probabilities must be equal to 1, which is 100%. The rate of return under each scenario is given as well. For example, if the demand for the company's product was weak, you will lose 50% of your capital out of your capital. This is minus 50%. On the other extreme, if the demand for the company's products was strong, you will gain 60%. So these are the rate of return under each scenario. The question here is to calculate first the expected return for the stock, the stock's expected return. Second, the standard deviation of the stock and the coefficient of variation of the stock. So now, given these different expected rate of returns, for example, given that you are going to lose 50% as the demand for the product or the company's products was weak, on the other extreme, you are going to uh, earn 60% if the demand was strong, what is the most expected rate of return? Because at the end, one scenario will occur. So what is the most expected scenario or what is the most expected rate of return? This is the question here. To calculate this expected rate of return, we should apply this formula. The probability of each scenario, PI, should be multiplied by the return of each scenario, RI. This multiplication should be repeated for all other scenarios to get at the end the expected rate of return. For example, 0.1 under weak scenario, this is the probability PI of weak scenario, should be multiplied by minus 50%, the RI rate of return under this scenario, weak scenario, plus 0.2 times minus 5% plus 0.4 times 16 plus 0.2 times 25 and finally 0.1 times 60% to reach 11.4%. So the most expected rate of return under these probability distributions is 11.4%. This is the expected rate of return of this stock. Okay, now we have to calculate the standard deviation of the stock. Actually, we expected 11.4% as a return. This is the expected return we calculated before. But this is an expected rate of return. Real figures or real returns in the future might differ. For example, if the demand for the company's product was weak, actually you are going to lose 50%, minus 50% return, even though you expected 11.4%. Uh, percent return. So this is a strong negative deviation. On the other hand, if the demand for the company's products was strong, you are going to gain 60%, much higher than the 11.4. So this is a positive deviation. Standard deviation is like calculating the average deviations under all scenarios. To do so, we have to apply this formula. Ri, the return under each scenario, minus the expected rate of return which we have calculated before the 11.4 percent to the power 2 times the probability of each scenario this calculation must be repeated for all other scenarios at the end we have to take the square root for this final answer to get the standard deviation let's do it actually if we look at each part uh, aside in this calculation uh, it will be much simple so actually this one is for the weak scenario okay this part is for the weak scenario this second part is for the below average scenario and this is the average scenario 
here, the above average scenario, and finally the strong scenario. So actually, minus 50% is the RI under weak scenario. Minus 11.4, minus because the formula includes minus. Minus 11.4, this is the expected rate of freedom we calculated before, uh, square to the power 2 times 0 0.1, the probability of the weak scenario. So this is the weak scenario calculation. Actually, the second and the third, fourth, fifth are the same. For example, minus 5% is a below average scenario. Minus the expected minus 11.4 to the power 2 times the probability of this below average scenario 0 0.2. Doing the same for all other scenarios at the end, don't forget the square root. So actually the answer of all these calculations will be 712.44. This is the variance of the stock, 712.44. Square root of the variance will give you the standard deviation. So here the standard deviation is equal to 26.69%. This is a measure of risk. So the lower is better. When calculating the expected rate of return, we prefer to see it higher. The more the return, the better the investor satisfaction. However, here the standard deviation is a measure of risk. So higher standard deviation means higher risk. Okay, now what is the coefficient of variation or CV for short? You have an expected rate of return equal to 11.4% and standard deviation equal to 26.69%. This expected rate of return might be good for you. However, relative to this level of risk, 26.69%, is it still good? We need to calculate the CV. CV is also calculated to compare the return and standard deviation for different stocks to choose the best. CV is calculated by dividing the standard deviation over uh, expected rate of return. The standard deviation is 26.69 divided by 11.4. The expected rate of return will give us 2.34. Okay, CV equal 2.34. This means for each percentage return, for each 1% rate of return you are expecting from this stock, you are exposed to 2.34% risk. So you have 2.34% standard deviation or risk for each 1% rate of return expected from this stock. 